Hello everyone, I'd like to welcome you to this video titled Comparing and Ordering Rational Numbers. Now you will need to get out your math journal and a pencil to watch this video. And the goal of the video is for you to be able to compare and order rational numbers. So before we get into actually doing that, let's take a look at what rational numbers actually are. I know we've already learned this in previous videos, but a rational number is a number that can be written in fraction form where both numbers are integers. So for example, 3, 1 and 75 hundredths, negative 2 thirds, 12 25ths, all of these numbers are rational numbers. Basically any number that we see um, throughout 6th grade is going to be a rational number. The only one, uh, not the only one, but an example of a uh, number that is not rational would be considered pi 3.14 and then it continues on and on and on and on and never ends. Um, you cannot put that in fraction form because it's just a repeating decimal that never ends. So let's take a look at some of the first steps when comparing and ordering rational numbers. Now throughout this lesson and when you order rational numbers what you need to do is you need to compare all the numbers the same way. And what I mean by that is that you don't want to compare fractions with decimals because that is very difficult. What um, I find is the easiest way to do this is turn everything into a decimal. You can easily compare decimals. Fractions can be very tricky when you're comparing them. However, decimals aren't nearly as difficult. So let's look into how to change a fraction into a decimal. So the first thing you need to do is set it up as a division problem. Okay, so we have 1 over 4. Think of it as 1 divided by 4. Okay, so we set that up as a division problem. We put the 1 here. And unless it's an improper fraction, you're always going to have to put a decimal point and then add a 0 with your dividend and put a 0 for your quotient. Now, we're going to ignore this decimal. So first step is think about 4 into 10. So 4 goes into 10 two times. Then we multiply 2 times 4 is 8. And then we have 10, even though it's 1.0, we're going to ignore that decimal. Like I said, 10 minus 8 is going to be 2. Now with decimals, you cannot have remainder. So what you do is just add another 0 to the end. If you remember, as you add zeros to the right of a decimal, the very end of a decimal, I should say, um, it does not add any value to that decimal. Okay, so we bring our zero down. 4 into 20 goes 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. And now we don't have a remainder. So therefore, we have our decimal. So 1 fourth equals 25 hundredths. Put my decimal there as a decimal. Okay, so 25 hundredths and 1 fourth actually equals the same thing, or they are equivalent. Okay, so let me erase this next one, and we'll take a look at 1 half. So we set it up as our division problem. Put that denominator as your divisor. The numerator as your dividend. So I put my 1 here. So we know that 2 cannot go into 1, so what we need to do, we need to put a decimal there and put a 0 at the end. Remember, that does not change the value at all. In other words, 1 is actually equal, not actually, but is equal to 1 and 0, 0 tenths, or 1.0. So now, 2 into 10 is going to go 5 times. 5 times 2 is 10. Put our 0 here. And then we can see that 1 half is equal to 5 tenths. So now let's take a look at 3 fourths. So again, we put our denominator as our divisor. Put our 3 as our dividend. 4 cannot go into 3, so we put our decimal here. We add our 0. Again, adding that 0 to the end does not change the value of the number at all. 4 into 30, most amount of times without going over is 7. 7 times 4 is 28. 
we subtract 28 from 30, that's going to give us 2. So we do not have, so you cannot have a remainder whenever you're dealing with decimals. Okay, so you cannot have, for example, 7 tenths with a remainder of 2. Okay, so what we do is we add another 0. Remember, that does not add value at all. 4 into 20 is going to go 5 times. 5 times 4 is 20. And we can see we don't have remainder, so that means we are finished. And you actually keep adding zeros at the end until you do not have a remainder, okay? Whenever you're changing a fraction to a decimal. So 3 fourths is 75 hundredths in decimal form. So let's take a look at comparing and ordering these rational numbers. So they are all rational numbers because they can all be written in fraction form. Okay, so the first thing that you need to do, it's very difficult to compare decimals and fractions. Okay, I don't know about you, but this looks very confusing to me. I'm going to show you what you can do. You will want to change all your fractions to decimals. So I'll do this. So we're going to take 3 fifths, make this into a decimal form because it's, it'll be easier to compare it that way. So 5 goes into 36 times without any left over. So I will write off to the side 3 fifths is equal to 0 0.6. And I'll come back to this here in just a little bit. So I'm going to erase this. And now the only other one I need to do is 7 tenths. So 7 tenths, change that into a decimal. Ten goes into seventy seven times without any left over, and we have seven tenths is equal to zero point seven in decimal form. All right, now the next step is you need to order or you need to list your decimals. Okay, so. What I have here, I'm going to have 0 0.85. I'm just going to compare them. I'm not going to list them just yet. So I have 3 fifths, which is actually 0 0.6. Okay, I need to remember that because when I list them from Lisa Greatest, I can't put 0 0.6. I have to put 3 over 5. And I have 0 or 15 hundredths here. And then I have 7 tenths. Okay, now when you're listing them, you want to make sure all the place value is lined up because with decimals, it does not matter the length of the decimal at all. Okay, what matters is the value. Okay, so what I do here, since it doesn't add any value at all, I like to make sure all my numbers have equal digits. Okay, so if it's lacking like the 6 and the 7, they only had one digit, I'll just put a 0 at the end. That doesn't add any value again. Um, all it does is helps me compare these numbers much easier. All right, so now if I'm going to list these from least to greatest, okay, I can easily see that 15 hundredths would be the least number. So I'll list them 0 0.15, 15 hundredths. So I'll even cross that out. My next number I see would be 60 hundredths, which was 6 tenths. And remember, that was 3 fifths. So I'm just going to write that as 3 fifths. I can't write it as 0 0.6 or 0 0.60 because that was not in the original list. So you have to write it in the fraction form. But I can easily see that I change it to the decimal form and what the fraction form is because I wrote it off to the side. So my next one, I have 85 hundredths and 70 hundredths that I'm comparing now. I can see my 7 in the tenths place is less than the eight in the tenths place for my 85 hundredths. So seven tenths would be my next number. Okay, so remember, I changed that fraction to a decimal, but I do need to write it in fraction form. And then the final one I have is 85 hundredths. So you can see the key 
for this is changing everything to a decimal because you can easily compare decimals with each other, but comparing fractions to decimals, that can be a little tricky. You will want to change all your fractions to decimals, so I'll do this. So we're going to take 3 fifths, make this into a decimal form because it's, it'll be easier to compare it that way. So 5 goes into 36 times without any left over. So I will write off to the side 3 fifths is equal to 0 0.6. And I'll come back to this here in just a little bit. So I'm going to erase this. And now the only other one I need to do is 7 tenths. So 7 tenths, change that into a decimal. Ten goes into seventy seven times without any left over, and we have seven tenths is equal to zero point seven in decimal form. All right, now the next step is you need to order or you need to list your decimals. Okay, so what I have here, I'm going to have zero. 0.85. I'm just going to compare them. I'm not going to list them just yet. So I have 3 fifths, which is actually 0 0.6. Okay, I need to remember that because when I list them from Lisa Greatest, I can't put 0 0.6. I have to put 3 over 5. And I have 0 or 15 hundredths here. And then I have 7 tenths. Okay, now when you're listing them, you want to make sure all the place value is lined up. Because with decimals, it does not matter the length of the decimal at all. Okay, what matters is the value. Okay, so what I do here, since it doesn't add any value at all, I like to make sure all my numbers have equal digits. Okay, so if it's lacking, like the 6 and the 7, they only had one digit, I'll just put a 0 at the end. That doesn't add any value again. Um, all it does is helps me compare these numbers much easier. All right, so now if I'm going to list these from least to greatest, okay, I can easily see that 15 hundredths would be the least number. So I'll list them 0 0.15, 15 hundredths. So I'll even cross that out. My next number I see would be 60 hundredths, which was 6 tenths. And remember, that was 3 fifths. So I'm just going to write that as 3 fifths. I can't write it as 0 0.6 or 0 0.60 because that was not in the original list. So you have to write it in the fraction form. But I can easily see that I change it to the decimal form and what the fraction form is because I wrote it off to the side. So my next one, I have 85 hundredths and 70 hundredths that I'm comparing now. I can see my 7 in the tenths place is less than the eight in the tenths place for my 8,500. So seven tenths would be my next number. Okay, so remember, I changed that fraction to a decimal, but I do need to write it in fraction form. And then the final one I have is 8,500. So you can see the key for this is changing everything to a decimal because you can easily compare decimals with each other, but comparing fractions to decimals, that can be a little tricky. Okay, now let's take a look at this in a real world setting. So we have Ty, Connor, and Jacob. Let's say they all went trout fishing and Ty caught a fish that was 13 and 7 tenths inches long. Connor caught one that was 12 and 3 fifths inches long. Jacob, 12 and 3 fourths inches long. It can be very difficult, again, to compare decimals and fractions, so it's important to make sure you change everything into a decimal form. You can easily compare it that way. Okay, so tie is already 13 and 7 tenths. We're good there. Connor, 12 and 3 fifths. Now, so when you're comparing a mixed number, just ignore the whole number. You just want to change that 3 fifths into a decimal. Okay, so this would be 12 and six tenths here for Connor. Jacob, 12 
and 75 hundredths inches. Okay, now again we're going to list our numbers, make sure the place value is all lined up. We need to figure out the order of the fish that they caught as far as the length. So again, this looks like right away that the 12 and 75 hundredths is the greatest number because it has the most digits. But remember, that does not really matter, doesn't matter at all when you're dealing with decimals. Okay, when you're look, looking at numbers to the right of the decimal. So in order to make ourselves just see how clearly that is, we just add zeros to the end. And now we are dealing with the same amount of digits. Remember, adding zero to the end does not change the value of that number at all. As long as it's to the right of the decimal, as long as it's the last digit um, to the right in your decimal there. So, for, so let's figure out the order of length of fish so we can see that Connor 12 and 60 hundredths or 12 and 6 tenths is the least number. So we can see that 12 and 3 fifths would be the smallest fish. Now it's pretty easy between Ty and Jacob. We can see Ty 13 inches, 12 inches. Pretty easy to see. We don't even need to look at the decimals there. And we can see Jacob would be the next largest fish. And then we can see Ty with 13 and 7 tenths of an inch um, of fish um, that he caught. That would be the largest fish. So this concludes the video on comparing and ordering rational numbers. If you have any questions about this concept, please come and see me.